birds, shorebirds, and waterfowl. They're in our 26,000 square foot free flight walkthrough aviary. The aviary provides sanctuary to 43 species of those types of birds, and it produces anywhere from 150 to up to 300 babies every season. A lot of the egrets, ibis, herons, and ducks that you see out here that aren't too skittish are typically previous year's aviary products. They're free to come and go as they choose, but a lot of them choose to stay here year-round because we know where the goods are. We still offer them food on a regular basis. Speaking of food, birds of prey are a very difficult type of animal to raise, let alone to release them after they've matured. So a diet that is normal for them is critical for their survival. You can't just open up a, a can or a bag for a raptor. You have to give them the specialty items that they're capable and accustomed instinctively of eating. So, in order to compensate for that, we go through 40,000 frozen rats, chicks, quail, and mice a year for their diets to keep them healthy and happy, because we have 20 species of raptors, which are the birds of prey. The aviary, on the other hand, are primarily fish eaters. Depending on the season, the aviary will get anywhere from 60 to 90 pounds of fish, as you can imagine, it's the 90 pound a day diet because it's baby season and they have to increase that, that load for the amount of new activity that's occurring inside there. We have five North American river otters. The river otters get fed twice daily, being fed right now as, we, as I speak. And depending on the season for them as well, they'll get anywhere from seven to 15 pounds per otter per day. So right now they're almost up to seven pounds a day and if our female becomes pregnant, which we suspect is about to happen, she'll get up to 15 pounds of fish every day, building up her fat reserve for the pregnancy and the nursing event that follows. Now the reason I'm telling you all these numbers is that we're nonprofit. It means we don't qualify for government aid, funding, Grants or assistance ships who cannot receive large monetary donations from major companies or corporations. That's why we rely heavily on the wildlife encounter audience to help cut the costs of feeding all of our injured animals with our little food fund sign over here. That's not a tip jar, by the way. That actually goes to help feeding all the animals that we have to take care of. Nearly 400 of them every day. Now, the animals in the wildlife encounter that we're going to see got 25 species that I use throughout the year. I usually use four or five animals every day, different animals every day, different, different animals every day, same animals every show. So these animals are all behind the scenes and they got private rooms. They don't belong to the breeding program. They've been chosen for their disposition, their demeanor, their temperament, and their trust, making them suitable for this up-close personal encounter where we encourage flash photography, questions and answers, and occasionally audience participation. So let's begin. Our first superstar is a very fortunate female. Fortunate to be alive, let alone be here. She was the victim of a dog attack that broke her jaw. Well, the good news is she was completely rehabilitated from that injury. The bad news is that she was blinded by the medicines. So rather than being set free, she was scheduled to be put down. So we asked the rehabber who was working with her if they would bring it over to us. Her name is Virginia. She's almost two years old. She's a full-grown adult, Virginia opossum. She doesn't need to see it the wildlife encounter. She's quite capable of finding 
her snacks with just the help of her nose. Come on out, Virginia. People want to take your picture. <laughs> but the reason that why we have her is that an opossum needs to find a source to sleep after they're done eating. And if you're completely blind, there's no way you can do that successfully. So this is why she is with us. She's been over 300 shows today. The opossum is considered a nocturnal scavenging forager. What that means, in layman's terms, is they eat whatever's not moving too fast. Now, you can't move too fast if you have a thumb on every foot. Makes the possums very good climbers, but their run resembles a gated, lizard-like waddle. They've got 50 teeth in their mouths. That helps them chew up scorpions, roaches, and spiders. The opossum is pretty much eating all kinds of stuff that most mammals avoid. Toxic toads, venomous snakes, worms, slugs, snails. They'll eat decaying vegetation, rotting fruit. Basically everything except dirt the opossum will eat. The opossum with 50 teeth, however, is absolutely harmless. They've been gifted the smallest brain of any mammal. They're incapable of defending themselves, fighting off an attack, or even evading danger. If the opossum ever becomes attacked or goes under attack, they have a few instinctive reflexes that they'll go through. First one is called the menace response. All that is is a pose, a posture, a display where they'll remain frozen in position with their mouths gaping wide, salivating profusely, baring all 50 teeth, hissing, and then all the hair on their body sticks out. They just remain frozen in that stance until the threat backs off. It's usually pretty effective. Anything that witnesses the menace response has second thoughts about getting close or curious to the opossum. But if that doesn't work, and they become under a physical attack, what the opossum is world famous for is a condition they go under. A catatonic trance, or a state of shock, where they lose consciousness, face will be contorted in a death grimace, hanging out their tongue, and then on top of all that, they lose control of all their bodily functions. So not only are they appearing dead, they're smelling like they've been dead for weeks. And that's usually all it takes for any predator to get the message to move on to something more appealing than a stinking, limp, wet opossum. After the threat leaves, the opossum will slowly regain consciousness. See movements of the nose and whiskers flaring, ears twitching. Eyes will slowly open, then they'll climb back up a tree to live another night. The opossum only lives about two years, but they're ready to breed when they're only six months old. The opossum can breed when it's six months. When females become pregnant, they have a gestation of just 13 days. The babies of the marsupials are born completely helpless, hairless, legless, yet they all manage to maneuver themselves into a flap of skin that all marsupials come equipped with. It's on the female's abdomen. It's actually referred to as the marsupium. Once inside the pouch, the babies will attach to one of the mother's milk glands and undergo rapid development. 